Blessings, everyone. Have another True Tuesday here. Amen. And I want to get right to it. Um, Something that God had been showing me for the last week or so. And um, uh, I was sitting down and it was so, you know, a lot, a lot of times God will give you visions. You're like, why are you giving me this vision? Then he'll explain the vision to you. And then, uh, you know, he'll tell you to release it if, if it needs to be released. Right. And so I was sitting down one day and uh, I was in my, I think it was in my kitchen just sitting in there. And um, and God has showed me the game perfection. And I don't know if anybody has played this when they were little. I, I did. It was like probably one of the first things that gave me anxiety as a kid. <laughs> but it's a game where um, you have all these different uh, shapes and these pieces that you have to put in these little slots. And it's, it's timed. And if you don't get them in the slot correctly, if you don't get them all in there, at the end of the time, it'll pop them all up out of the out of, out of place. It'll shake up the, the whole thing and all of the pieces will be out of place, even the ones that you put in into place, right? But if you get them all in there correctly, then it won't shake it up when the time is out. So uh, you're running, you're racing against time on this thing. So I was like, well, why are you showing me this game of perfection, right? And so then, uh, so what God was showing me and what, what he released to me, and now I can release it to you, um, is that, um, right now when we look at, when we're looking at kingdom and we're looking at, at, uh, his church, um, the, the thing the the, 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 the main spirit that's being com combated right now, or the main spirit that we are warring with right now or fighting with right now is religion. Uh, a religious spirit, right? Because, uh, and, 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 and I'm going to explain why, um, for one, for the, during this pandemic, um, when the pandemic hit, um, God sent correction and judgment to his church. Remember, you know, judgment always starts at the church first. And he was, there was some things in church that was, you know, just very faulty, you know, a, a lot of false and, and fake crazy stuff going on before pandemic hit. Um, and so he's sitting correction and judgment to his church. Now, during this time of correction and judgment and during this time of pandemic, he wanted his people to rest, reflect, do some self-reflection, do some repentance, right? Um, then, so, cause you have to do all this so you can get ready for the next step, right? And this is, this is, uh, you look, if you look at throughout history of the Bible of the Israelites, right? You know, he always would, 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 would put them in a point of rest, right? you know, judgment. Then they sit down, reflect, they repent, they cry out. And then God, you know, uh, heals them or he, you know, he saves them. Right. And so, uh, you know, he was showing me that there were some churches like it, during this shutdown, when it was time to shut down during that shutdown was a time of reflection and a time of rest for his people, for his leaders, there were some churches that did not shut down. And so in, in your natural body, in our natural bodies, um, we need rest, right? And so if we are not, if we don't get any sleep, if we don't get any sleep, right? Um, there is, uh, there, there is no revelation or no newness or we're not refreshed. And so we just start talking. You, you start talking crazy after a while if you ain't had no sleep, right? Okay. Spiritually, spiritually, um, there are some churches that did not rest. There are some leaders that did not rest. They kept going and out of pride, they were like, well, ain't no, ain't no pandemic going to shut, shut my stuff down, your stuff. Right. When God is the one that was trying to shut you down in the first place, um, to, so that he can spend, so you can rest in him because a lot of times before the pandemic, we were doing a lot of go, go, going and not even having a chance to really just sit down and rest in him and get revelation for the next step because you were going to conference after conference, service after service, just all kinds of stuff. There was no rest. There was no rest. So even if you, we were doing the work of God, you know, we were doing his work without rest. And so we were, we were just basically preaching off of fumes, ministering off of fumes, right? So that's why he did this global reset so he can let you sit down and rest and reset kingdom stuff kingdom work you know kingdom vision kingdom revelation right and so you're looking at some of these leaders that did not rest they are now working off of old revelation or microwaved 
revelation. They're wondering why they're not getting a new thing or a new, a new revelation, a fresh revelation. Why? Because they didn't reset. They're still working off of those fumes pre-pandemic. And so now we're looking at, and, and, and then it comes off of pride and they still are not resting because they still think that what they're preaching is correct and it's not, right? And so the, now the spirit of pride has crept in. And when, once that spirit of pride creeps in, you know, there's a fall that comes after that pride. And the, you're starting to see a great falling away. But when you look at this, a lot of them are now, you know, have a religious mindset. And it's a huge stronghold in the church, a religious mindset. And, and I, and you can't, I, I'm not going to deter because once, 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 once we, you know, go through this correction, once we go through the reset and we'll, once we go through a new revelation and when the thing about that new re- revelation that God is sending is a new anointing for his people. Right. And so the, some of these leaders are resistant to the new very resistant to the new. That's a religious mindset. Religious mindset is somebody who is, re- they're, they're resistant to new. They don't want the new. They're resistant to it because we have done things like this for years and we don't want to change what we're doing. That's a, look, look at the Pharisees and Sadducees. The new, Jesus came. Jesus was a new, right? But he disrupted and upset their old way of living and their old way of life. And so, and they don't want to change. So what they do, they killed off the new, they killed off the help, they killed off the savior, right? And so you're seeing this a lot, even in the church, you're seeing a lot of leaders killing off this new anointing or trying to kill off the new anointing. So as you're walking in the new and you, you're going to, you're going to, you are going to run up against resistance from pastors or leaders or People with old mindsets and religious mindsets. Why? Because they did not sit down and rest and get revelation. So they don't have the revelation of the new anointing and of the new mindset and of the new way that God wants things to go and flow in his church. And so since they don't have the new, they're still working off with old. And so now they are resistant to your new and your new anointing, and they are resistant to change. Okay. And so when God was showing me this game of perfection, this game of perfection, you're seeing these leaders that have this old religious mindset. They are racing each other. It's like they are racing. They're trying to jump on top of each other and racing each other because they have in their mindset what perfection is. This is perfection. This is perfect. This is what we're doing right now is perfect. What we did 10 years ago is perfect. This is what they're thinking. So they're, they're trying to hurry up and, and fit into these molds. Now, and so they're making molds for each other to fit into molds for each other instead of fitting into the mold of God. And because in their mindset, in their prideful mindsets is perfection. Oh, what I'm doing is perfect. So, and they, they start making molds for each other to fit, just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees were making different laws to fit each other. And they each made laws for each other to fit in. And they were fitting into each other's laws instead of God's law. Right. And so when you look at this, per this, this game of perfection, and they're sitting here trying to fit these molds, they are running out of time. This religious mindset is running out of time because now God is going to send another judgment and correction to the church to shake up the religious mindset. That religious stronghold that's sitting over the church, he is going to shake it up. And so when you look at the game of perfection, how the the time is running out, boom, shake up. Now, when we look at the shake up, we're looking at the shake up where God shakes uh, to test them and and take and take away things that cannot take the test. He's not shaking up to destroy. He's not going to destroy his church. He is, he is shaking up the religious mindset to get rid of it, to take it out because the new can't flow with the old sitting there with this religious mindset, this, this, this old that's resisting the change, you know, you can't put new, put, you can't put the new wine into old wine skins, right? You can't do it. And so even, uh, uh, Hebrews 12, 26 through, um, we'll do 26 through 29. 
you know, this is a description that God gave me for, for, for what he was talking about. Amen. And so Hebrews 12, 26 to 29, he said, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised saying yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Right? So wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. So what he's doing, he's shaking up kingdom, right? He's shaking up the kingdom. And, and this is called a sifting, you know, he, cause he's got the sift before he can shift. So he's got to sift some some things out. He's got to get rid of some things. So why he's that's why. So when you like, even when you put things through a sifter, you shake the sifter. So you got to shake things up so you can remove the things that need to be sifted out. So those things can be removed. And so that's what he's doing now is that he is shaking kingdom things up. He is shaking up everything you thought you you thought that you knew about him. He's shaking up your your foundation. He's got to shake up that foundation and remove some things that were implanted into you by some of these faulty leaders that resist the change. He's got to remove those things so that he can implant the new into you. That he can implant this new anointing on you because the, the, the new cannot flow when that old is sitting there being resistant to the flow of God. And so the thing about it, God's not going to force you. He's not going to force us to accept. He's not going to force you. But, but the thing about it, because, you know, Holy Spirit is a gentleman. So he's not going to force you to accept, but he's, he may shake you out the way. <laughs> He may just shake you out the way because a lot of the, what it is, is that some of these leaders are so resistant to the change that they are standing in the way of their people who are accepting of this new anointing and not only standing in their way, not only standing in their way, but blocking them from receiving the new anointing and receiving the new. And so this is the thing that God has been, been, been angry about is that his new new cannot flow. Now, how, <clears throat> how a church after his own heart is not allowing him in? How are some of these churches not allowing God to flow and not allowing the anointing to flow? Have you ever been to a church where the anointing starts tr trying to flow and then it's quenched? But you're a church representing Christ, but you're not allowing him to have free reign in the service? And so this thing is going to be shaken up and you're going to see a big shake up. You may, and in this shake up, in this shake up, you could, of course, like we've been talking about exposure, some things going to be exposed, whether some things are exposing you, me, you know, your, your leaders, you know, you might, you might see some churches closed down in the shake up. Like again. Some churches might close down because they have been resistant for years. God has been telling them this, this, and that. And because of pride, they've been resistant. Or because of the fact that, oh, well, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings and not receive my offering. You know, they've been, they have resisted this new anointing of God, this new flow of God. God wants to pour out on his people, you know, and not only pour out a new anointing and new strength and new and birth out something new, but also prosperity. Also prosperity. You know, he wants his people to be prosperous. Even in a time of pandemic, he wants his people to be prosperous because his grace and mercy abounds. You know, this is the grace and the mercy that he has bestowed upon us. But because of the fact that people have been resistant to change and resistant to the new, it's being held up and being blocked. So God is going to shake up everything in your mind that you thought was perfection. Everything, in your, every religious mindset in your mind that you thought what was right. He is going to shake up. He's also going to start shaking up these false prophets that's going in your churches, preaching to your, preaching to your flesh and petting your flesh and not dealing with you. He going to shake that up too, because that, that right there, you telling people what they want to hear instead of what thus said the Lord, and you are supposed to be an agent of God. That is a no, no. So he's shaking up that too. 
He is going to shake up the per- perception. Because right now, the church the church right now is at a place. <clears throat> and the reason why he got to do this is because we have people that are coming in um, that want to give their life to Christ. They're coming in off the street. And so he's got to make sure the church is right and is, and it is a place that is conducive to healing and deliverance of these people that are going to come in off the street. The people that's coming in off the street, they need deliverance from things. Yes, they need love. You know, and we can't love, we can't love, we can't show people the love of Christ if we are, are walking the walk that we walk right now where we want to have 50,000 programs but no love of Christ and no no getting people uh, uh, free. You preaching to people, but that's it. They don't know what you said in the message. Why? Because you're not getting them free. You're not getting them healed. You're not getting them delivered. You're not getting them set free. Why? Because you need to be delivered. You need to be healed. You need to be set free. So what, how do you do that? You get shook up. That's got to be shaken. But again, God got to shake some things. He's got to shake those things so he can remove things that should not be there. Got to be a shaking. Amen. So God bless you. You know, this is what God had given me um, to, to release to his people. You know, again, just take heed. Don't be not strange when God just starts, the Holy Spirit just wakes you up in the middle of the night to start praying for certain people and certain things, or you feel a touch of the Holy Spirit and you're like, why, why, why is the Holy Spirit so strong right now? Yeah. Cause he's ushering in, in the new, <clears throat> but you got to get in here. We've, we've got to get in his presence. I'm not going to say you, we got to get, stay in his presence so that he can give us this new revelation to share with his people. We've got to stay in his presence. And the thing about it, people think just because just because you're not a, 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 a prophet or apostle, or whatever, that you can't be in his presence and you can't be prophetic. Yeah, it, the prophetic is for everyone. That's a spiritual gift, right? Anybody who got the Holy Spirit can can prophesy. You know, you th- now just because you prophesy don't mean you walk in the office of prophet. And we do another lesson on that later. But you can still prophesy because it's a gift of the spirit. <laughs> and if you got a Holy Spirit, guess what? You can walk in that gift. Amen. So God bless you. <clears throat> God bless you. I hope that you take heed to the word of the Lord. Amen. And God bless you. And we'll do another True Tuesday uh, next week. But uh, blessings unto you. I just hope that um, we we start uh, um, ushering in the new. We That we allow Holy Spirit to move in us and move in the new that God will shake, start shaking up these religious mindsets and these mindsets of old so that we can walk in this new anointing that he is trying to bestow upon his people. So God bless you. Love you guys.